I had so much fun doing that street sweeper video that I had to come right back and get something else done. There was another submachine gun that I saw when I was running through the vault at Poolins and it got me thinking maybe it's something, it's not something that's brand new by any stretch of the imagination, but it's something that's unknown to a lot of people. And uh, I think this should prove to be a pretty interesting video. The gun that we're going to be focusing on is manufactured by Smith & Wesson. Now when I say Smith & Wesson, type in the comments down below which gun it is that you immediately think of. What is the iconic Smith & Wesson gun to you? What is it that you think of when you see that Smith & Wesson logo? To me, it's always been a revolver, a Smith & Wesson revolver. Specifically, that Model 29 that Dirty Harry Callahan utilized and immortalized in that movie Magnum Force when he said those magic words in 1973. And instead of me giving you a really crappy, dirty, hairy impression, let's hear it from his voice. I know what you're thinking. Did he fire six shots or only five? Well, to tell you the truth, in all this excitement, I kind of lost track myself. But Ian, this is a 44 Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world, and would blow your head clean off. You've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, Even though it's those wheel guns, those revolvers that, that I tend to think of when I think of Smith & Wesson, I've owned several other Smith & Wesson guns, rifles and shotguns. Uh, their M&P line of, of pistol, their new modern striker fire pistols are actually really nice too. So they're not by any means limited to, to those wheel guns. Those are just the ones that I think I had the most exposure to. But they're not my favorite. My favorite one is the gun that we're going to discuss today, and it's the Smith & Wesson Model 76 submachine gun. So this is a much lesser known variant uh, manufactured by Smith & Wesson. It is the Smith & Wesson Model 76 submachine gun, or usually referred to in our uh, industry uh, as the Smith 76. And its history is pretty interesting. During the Vietnam conflict, the United States Navy started looking for submachine guns for the Navy SEALs. And their favorite gun at the time was the Kelspruda, the Swedish uh, Kelspruda, uh, typically referred to as the, the uh, Swedish K. And that was a 9mm open bolt, uh, full auto only, uh, folding stock, tubular receiver, submachine gun, very similar to what would eventually become the Smith & Wesson Model 76. Now you might ask yourself if the Navy SEALs already had a favorite that was performing well or that they thought would perform well, why didn't they just go with it? Well, the, the Swedish K of the Kelspruda was made in Sweden and most of us have probably heard about Sweden's stance um, as negative when it comes to war. They typically take a neutral stance uh, when there are conflicts and not only were they neutral, have that normal neutral stance in Vietnam, but they were very actively protesting against the United States involvement in it. So sourcing guns from Sweden wasn't going to be an option. Since the Swedish K wasn't going to work and we still needed to find something moving forward, in 1966, George Ersham at Smith & Wesson was contacted to see if they might be interested in sourcing out a new design and developing a new submachine gun to take the place of the role that they had originally intended or thought of for the Swedish K. As it turned out, Smith & Wesson just a year or two before that had gone through a change of ownership and they wanted to revamp their market with a, a focus and an emphasis on law enforcement. Uh, so they started getting involved with the manufacture of handcuffs, uh, riot control equipment, uh, less lethal ammunition and things along that nature. So it was kind of a natural fit. And that first official request from the United States Navy to Smith & Wesson landed on their desk the very end of 1966. And evidently they were extremely ambitious about the project because by January of 1967, the very earliest models of what would become the uh, Smith Model 76 was ready for testing. Now it's very similar. The Smith & Wesson Model 76 that ended up being the production gun uh, is very similar to the Swedish K 
but there are definitely some important differences. It should be clear that function over aesthetics uh, was the most important part. We've got a regular tube receiver with fixed sights that were only adjustable by bending or, or contorting them. Um, it's an open bolt select fire uh, operating mechanism, straight blowback. It has a, a left side folding stock and a barrel shroud. And it does have a quick change barrel in uh, a mechanism that's very similar to what we see used in the Uzi submachine gun where there's a ratcheting nut and the barrel just spins right off for, for replacement or for maintenance. It was definitely an improved design over the Kelspruda. The rate of fire on the Smith 76 was set to be optimum at around 720 rounds a minute where the Swedish K was only 500. Uh, and it's important to know too that this was select fire. The Smith & Wesson would fire in semi or full uh, and the uh, Swedish K was a straight up full auto only gun. They also made the stock so it folded to the left side so it wouldn't interfere with the ejection port. It could still be utilized with the stock folded as well as the stock opened. It feeds from a 36 round magazine and when production finally took off about 6,000 of them ended up being manufactured and that's regular standard production. Now for the United States Navy there's no record as to how many they manufactured but the Navy did take possession of some and they had a different model designation for theirs. Their gun was called the Mark 24 Model O Smith & Wesson submachine gun. So that's the backstory behind this neat little Smith & Wesson that maybe doesn't pop up on too many people's radar when they think of a classic Smith & Wesson gun. It's certainly one that I think of. Let's call my buddy Dave and have him do a little bit of shooting on my behalf since I haven't been cleared for live fire yet and show you what it looks like and what it sounds like being fired both in semi and in full auto, but mostly full auto. Now these guns, as you could tell, obviously, are a lot of fun to shoot. And something kind of interesting about them is they are uh, C and R, they're Curio and Relic listed. So people that live in C and R states actually have the uh, Smith 76s available to them to purchase, as well as anyone that lives in an NFA friendly uh, free state like I do. Now this particular Smith & Wesson Model 76 is going across the auction block at the pool and auction the beginning of November 2021. So if it's something that you'd like to own, your opportunity is coming up very shortly. I hope you enjoyed this peek at the Smith & Wesson Model 76 submachine gun. And from this point forward, when someone mentions Smith & Wesson to you, it might not just be a revolver that you think of. It might be a really cool open bolt submachine gun. Anyway, if you did, please click like, share us with your friends in your vast social media universe. Subscribe to the channel if you don't already. Make sure you check out our shirts available from Bunker Branding. Um, you've got the AR-15 back in black as well as the Big Shooter uh, logo gear, the classic and the limited edition shirts, and that information will be in the description below this video as well. Keep your eyes open as things move onward and upward as we continue to push back in black. And we have more, uh, more really cool, interesting things coming up very soon. Till next time, have fun and be safe.